wall. Clear. And clear. Okay, now we're good. All right, so here's the simple concept we're going to deal with. We're going to take the stuff we did yesterday, do it three times. And when we do it three times and solve for the point of intersection, we'll end up with our center. So which one do you want to do first? Orthocenter, circumcenter, or, or centric? Or centric. Any particular reason? No. Okay. Do you have a color preference? Blue, okay. Um, where did I put my cards? Okay. Want to help me? Sure. Yeah. Take those. I'll tell you what to do with those in a second. Okay, centroid. Uh, what do you want to call the triangle? Um, so, S U N or S O N? S U N. So we are going, our ultimate goal here is we're going to find the coordinates of the centroid of triangle S-U-N. Cut those cards first. And we'll do, uh, yeah, and then put them back on top. And normally if you cut cards, you wouldn't put them back because that's how you get beat up in a card game, but for this purpose. We'll make, um, do you like, which, what color do you like better, red or black? Red. Red. So we'll make red positive, black negative. Okay. Okay, so take the top card there. Joker. Oh, now you can pick any number you want. Eight. That's it. You can pick any number in the universe. Oh, you, oh. I mean, you go crazy. Nineteen. Nineteen. <laughs> oh. A positive or negative? Um, wait, red is positive. No, the jokers don't come in different oh, colors. Positive. Positive. Okay. Next card. King. So king is uh, ten. Jack is ten. No, tell we have a ten. Eleven. 13. Twelve. Thirteen. You're off to a rip roar and start. That's black? Yes. So that should be negative. Ew. Okay. All right. Next card. Eight. There's the eight you were looking for. Next card. Negative seven. I'm liking it so far. Now, there is a slim possibility doing this that we don't get a triangle, but we'll live on the edge. King of Hearts, 13. All right, that's okay. I'm not nervous. None. Ooh, queen. Negative 12. Beautiful. You can graph this, but it's a waste of time. Okay? It's not going to, because you'll see the answers become very bizarre. And so graphing it isn't going to tell you where the answer is, because you're going to get something like 437 over 19. You're not going to see that on a graph. So I'm just drawing a reference here of what we need to do. We're doing a centroid. So in a centroid, uh, wait, let me rephrase my question. For a centroid, what determines where the centroid is located? Which of the three lines that you did yesterday? Right. The medians, good. Now you can use all the big words in the world that you want, Matt, like this word median. If I don't know what a median is, we're kind of screwed. So, Matt, what's a median? Isn't a median uh, a line that goes through a vertex and midpoint of a height? Good. Okay. So which one do you want to start with? Language. You want to do UN, NS, or US? US. US. America. Beautiful. What do you want to call that midpoint? T. T. Okay. Here's a simple concept. There are three medians in that triangle. If the three medians intersect at the at the at a point of concurrency called the centroid, is it fairly obvious that we don't need all three? Yes. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Do you want a demonstration? No. Stand up for me. I won't hurt you. Put your arm out like this. Good. You want to, no, stand here. Put your arm out towards me. Good. You want to help? Good. So you're going to put your arm up like this. Okay. Good. And then I'll put my arm like this. Okay, now you see where, <laughs> this will work really well in the video, by the way. See where our arms intersect? Yeah. Just say yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Do you still see where their arms intersect? Yeah. yeah. Do I matter? No. No, good. You can sit down. That was fairly awkward, wasn't it? <laughs> so we're only going to find two medians. 
If I have two lines and I want to find the point of intersection between those two lines, how do I do that? Has it been there? No. Well, let's let's roll with it. And we'll we'll see what happens when we get there. Okay. So we're going to find t. T is the midpoint. So I'm going to mark it in the picture, and I'm going to do a little bit of this. All right. How do I find t? <coughs> no, not the difference. Rhymes with some average. Average of the x's and average of the y's. Okay, so t is the midpoint between u and s. So I'm going to take 8 plus 13 divided by 2, comma, negative 7 plus negative 12 divided by 2, which means the t is located at... I'm sorry, what? No, we're doing, oh, I did the wrong points. Thank you. I did U and N instead of U and S. Let's start over. Got to be careful when you're doing this. Good catch. Okay, so we're doing 8 plus 19 divided by 2. Thank you for catching that now instead of at the very end. And negative 13 plus negative 7. How am I doing now? Is that better? Okay, so T is located at whew, 27 halves, comma, negative 10. As I'm going through this, if I lose you, just raise your hand and I'll back up and explain what I'm doing. What's the next step to finding the equation of the line TN? What do I need now? I need a slope. I need the slope of TN. So negative 10 minus negative 12 over 27 halves minus uh, 13. 2 over 1 half. Oh, come on, this is going to turn out to be nice. Did I do my math right there? Yes. That seems too pretty. Let's go with it then. Yeah. Okay? Hopefully I'm not wrong. So, uh, Matt, you started this mess. What's the equation then of the line TN? TN? TN would then be Y minus... Um, Which one do you want to use, T or N? Let's use N. Uh, Why N? Or T. No, 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 no. Your answer is correct. You should use n. I'm just asking why n so that they all understand why n is a better choice. Because we don't have two points for... Hmm. Can we... There's a fraction. Yeah, we don't want like... I don't want that fraction. Yeah. All right, so back to you. Using n. Y minus... Y plus 12. Y plus 12 equals... Equals 4. Times the quantity is how you're reading it, yeah. X minus 13. Good. This is important, so I'm going to put a rectangle around it because I'm going to need it later. Back to blue. Tommy, what do you want to do next? Which one? Line SN. S? SN. So you want to do from U to SN? Yeah. Okay. What do you want to call that point? Uh, R. R. Any particular reason? No. I'm going to go through the exact same process that I just went through. Okay. And I'm going to do it a little quicker because time is of the essence. So R is located at S and N. So I'm doing these two. 19 plus 13 divided by 2, comma, negative 13 plus negative 12 divided by 2, which puts R at uh, 32 is 16 comma ne ooh, negative 25 halves. And again, check my math as we go along here. <coughs> okay, what do I do next? Done. Oh. 
find the slope of u r. Good. Find the slope of u r, which would be here's r, here's u. So negative 7 minus plus 25 halves over 8 minus 16. Running out of room here. Uh, let's see, 11 halves over negative 8. If you're having trouble doing those calculations, use your calculator. If you can't do negative 7 minus 25 halves, that's okay. Or if you can't do it quickly, use your calculator. Okay? Don't turn to decimals. Once you go down that decimal path, it's going to create problems. Try to keep it in fraction form as much as possible. This would simplify to what? Negative 11 over 6, 16. again, dividing by a number is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply 11 halves by negative 1 eighth. Okay? Now I know what UR is. So UR is y minus, uh, I'm going to use u because I don't want fractions. So y plus 7 is equal to negative 11 sixteenths times the quantity x minus 8. Another important thing, so I'm going to put it in another rectangle. Okay, let's stop and take a breather there for a second. Tom has a question. What do you got for me, buddy? It was a question. It was, it was a statement? What? I thought you were going to say what was the Tom, what are we going to do next? Well, when you find where those two lines meet. Beautiful. How would I do that? Anybody? How would I do that? Julia, what do you say? Uh, that's a method we could use, but what's the big picture? What are we solving for? How do I do that? Perfect. Just solve the system? Yeah, system of equations. Okay. Which I knew we were talking about. Okay. I'm going to need another board. So is everybody good before I switch over? Okay, I'm also going to need somebody to tell me those equations because I won't memorize them. So one of them was y. Oh, color change. Five what was the first one? Y plus 12 equals 4 quantity of x minus 13. Okay. Any other one? Y plus 7 negative 11 sixteenths quantity of x minus 8. And I'm solving a system, so I'm going to put the braces there. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Plot the power. Right on. Um, Didn't let the man get you down. You went in there fighting. Did you fight the good fight? Yeah. You just sat there, didn't you? Okay, good. Uh, Julia, how do you want to solve that? Good. We could use substitution. We could use elimination. There's a wide variety of ways that you can solve this. I'll show you how I would solve it, but that doesn't mean that you need to solve it this way. Some people might just want to do elimination. Some people might want to do substitution. Okay. I don't care. As long as you get the right answer, that's all that matters. And this is where things get ugly. Yeah. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the distributive property because bad things happen when you don't. Uh, 52, I believe. And check my math as we go along. What's 88 sixteenths simplified? Okay, so let's stop for a second. Does everybody know how to simplify a fraction on their calculator? Let's review just to make sure you don't. Or, no, that made no sense. Let's, let me tell you the wrong way to do it so you can't ever simplify. What I meant to say is let's review to make sure you can. I have the value of negative 88 sixteenths, or positive 88 sixteenths. I'm wondering if that can be simplified. 88 divided by 16, enter. You'll get a fraction. What is it? It's 5.5. Okay, let's pretend, let's pretend you get an ugly decimal. Math, enter, enter, will convert it back to a fraction. And it's 11 halves? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's doable. Still solving a system. Okay, so 
What do you want to do? Um, question? Okay, just waving your hands in the air like you just don't care. Oh, okay, what do you want to do? Uh, subtract, I don't like, make the y on the left side. So subtract 12 and 7. Good. So if we stay with Julia's idea and do substitution, what I would do is move the 12 to the other side, move the 7 to the other side. They're both equal to y, set them equal to each other. Okay, so let's do that. So this becomes y equals 4x, subtracting 12 from both sides, minus 64. That one's good to go. Y is equal to negative 11 sixteenths X. Uh, 11 halves minus 14 halves is negative 3 halves. Still solving a system. I lose anybody or are we good? Okay, beautiful. Now, using substitution, I'm going to take 4X minus 64 and set it equal to negative 11 sixteenths X minus three halves. Next decision you have to make. How good am I with fractions? Some of you are outstanding with fractions. Some of you are horrible with fractions. What I would recommend is to get rid of all the fractions. Right out of the bat. As soon as you get an equation like this, fractions go away. How do I get rid of the fractions? Multiply by the denominator. What number in this particular case would I multiply by? Beautiful. I'm going to multiply everything by 16. Now, that means you're going to get some big honking numbers, but who cares? We won't have fractions. I'll trade big numbers for fractions any day. Uh, 64x minus, um, I have no clue. 1, 1024. 1024 equals negative 11x uh, minus 24. How am I doing so far? Okay. You have to remember to multiply everything by that number. Both sides of the equation or it screws everything up. When we, uh, I'm going to take a breather for a second here before I finish. When we get into these triangle centers, what's going to happen is you're going to make a small mistake somewhere along the way. You saw me make a mistake early in the problem. That, prob that mistake would carry all the way through the problem and cause me to get the wrong answer. When we're doing these problems, I don't really care if you get the right answer. What I'm looking for is the method that you're using. It's, this is difficult for me because what happens is when I have to grade quizzes and tests on this, I'm going to have to redo these problems every time someone makes a mistake. Do you understand what I mean by that? So if the answer is like 2, 3, and I, I'm grading Alex's, and he's got 2, 3, and I check his work, and everything's good, I move on. But if she has 10, 42, I'm not necessarily just going to mark off 8 points. I have to go through and check to see her method is correct. There is a possibility that she made a small sign error somewhere along the way, which screwed everything up. Okay, so again, the method is what we're looking for, not necessarily the final answer. Okay, move the 11 to the other side. 75x is equal to... Uh, 1,000, so x is equal to 1,000 divided by 75, which is? 40 thirds. Ooh. We're halfway there, kids. How do I find x? Sorry, I already found x. How do I find y? Plug it in. Do you care where? I would suggest you come down and use one of these bad boys. And use your calculator. So if you did 1,000 divided by 75, you've got this number on your calculator. Store that. Do you know how to do that? No. Stow over on the left-hand side. Where? Oh. It's the one that says stow on it. And then X. Now, you can use the letter X, or at the top of your calculator, there's a button that has an X. A T, o and a theta, and an N. Oh. Okay. See that button? That button counts as an X. So instead of having to go alpha X every time, you can just hit that. Store that number into X. So now wherever the calculator sees X, it's going to put in 40 thirds. Then just come over here and on your home screen, type in 40 X minus 64, enter. You'll get a fraction. Sorry, you'll get a decimal. Convert that decimal back to a fraction, and Tom got. Or wait, when you store it yeah. to x, you put enter. Yeah, store. 
and X, enter. So now it's in X. And then do, in the home screen, type in 4X minus 64. Negative 32 thirds. How do you unstore it, though? You don't. All you can do is store things on top of it. Small point here, we're not done yet. Why? Because you need a like you need a point you don't need. You right. This should be given in point form. Forty thirds comma negative thirty two thirds in parentheses. There's my central. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. Oh yeah. What time are we out of here? Two minutes. Two minutes? Holy guacamole. The process is in place for all the others. So if I want to find a circumcenter, how would I do it? Louder and prouder. You do it twice and you find the point of intersection. Between what? Okay. What am I looking for for uh, circumcenters? Oh. Beautiful. Perpendicular bisectors. And if you're doing an ortho center, you're looking for altitude. So you take what we did yesterday. Wait, stop packing up. You're going to do what we you're going to use what we did yesterday. Do it one more time, then solve the system. And notice, solving the system is not always that easy. Be careful with your math. Okay. What I will do is I'm actually going to post two videos today. I'm going to post the one I'm recording now on the centroid. And then I'm going to force a period to do either the altitude or the, um, sorry, the uh, ortho center or the circum center so that you have two videos. If you struggle, you can go back and look at either one. You'll be missing one, but again, the process is the same. I'm saddened by that. What? More of this. Okay. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Yeah, I'll post the homework day um, six. Hey, you know, this place is supposed to be huge.